ever do that again. You scare the daylights out of me. The passenger apologized and said, well, I'm sorry, I didn't realize that a little tap would scare you so much. The driver replied, well, sorry, it's really not your fault. Today's my first day as a cab driver. Uh, I've been driving a funeral van, van for the last 25 years. Obviously, he's not like and he's probably not used to the resurrection power of coming into this wonderful life and power that's available to us. Yet the Bible is telling us and inviting us through so many beautiful stories, beautiful examples, metaphors, and symbols saying, get used to it. Get used to the power and the presence that's there for you. Now, Christmas and Easter, two big holidays in the Christian church are really summing up our spiritual life. For at Christmas, we find the light has come. In the midst of hopelessness, it's here. We celebrate the light is here. The light, the presence, the goodness, it's here. And at Easter, we celebrate that no one can put that light out. The light is still on. The light is still here. So with these two great celebrations, we carry this message of a resurrection power, of a power that's available to each and every one, a power that's igniting within us, a light that's on, and a light that continues to be on. These two holidays reinforce how we are to live our lives, to live our lives with a power, a stone rolling power. You see, it's a lifestyle of people of faith that they live, and it's a lifestyle that I'm going to call the Rolling Stone lifestyle. It's the key part of our Easter story is the fact that there was a tombstone that was rolled away. We all think about that for a moment, and we realize, wait a minute, are there tombstones in our own life that need to be rolled away? Are we living the Rolling Stone lifestyle? The Rolling Stone lifestyle is the reversal of what is thought to be absolute. When we think about all the things in this physical world, we think this is the way it is and there's no other option. Yet in the Rolling Stone lifestyle, we are living this wonderful faith and belief that says, I put the power of my trust. I put the power of my faith. I put the power of my affirmation. I put the power of my intention. I put the power of my believing at work and I know all things are possible. It's a lifestyle that removes all barriers, all obstacles within our journey. We often have a difficulty believing for anything other than what we see in life, like the disciples, like those who heard the teachings of Jesus. They have difficulty believing that all things were possible because all they would look at would be from the physical perspective. And so the miraculous was there. There were miracles provided to always help them in the journey of changing their beliefs, seeing the miraculous unfold and allowing them a pathway of change to say, wow, I do see things are possible. I do see that things are different, that I can live looking beyond the physical, live looking beyond the literal and living the metaphysical life. The life that is making us rethink every thought, rethink every outlook, rethink and to think in a new way. We're wasting our spiritual life as spiritual beings having this physical experience if we're not living the life of power, seeing beyond the physical. If we're not living and expressing this power that's available to us, that has been given to us, that works in us, through us, around us, and always for us. Let's look at today's lesson that we read so beautifully earlier, coming to us from the passage in Matthew chapter 28. And it begins with this. The Easter story starts off with a violent earthquake. Earth-shaking experience is what it was of all the nature, all the world around it is shaken, and the physical was rocked by what was transpiring. And I'm gonna ask you, are you ready for your world to be shaken, your world to be rocked? That's right. Because what is the life of the vibrant spiritual person? It is one where we look at scenarios and we find our world is rocked and shaken in new and better ways. We often hear and think uh, that the doctor is saying it's not possible, or the world is saying this is not going to work, or people and friends and family are saying that's not the way things happen. 
but we're living in a world where we can shake things up, where there can be this earthquaking experience, where it changes our whole outlook in life. And we begin to see things with the Easter perspective, the perspective of from that which was to that which is, to see the unfolding of the power within our lives. The text goes on to share that there was an angel that came down from heaven. Now, angels are messengers. The scripture speaks of them always bringing good news. In scripture, they're symbolic of the wonderful spiritual thoughts that come from a higher consciousness, and they guide us. They come down from heaven. Heaven, that higher understanding, that higher consciousness, that greater awareness. Thoughts come from that plane, from that understanding. And when we welcome these kind of thoughts within our heart and our life, these God thoughts, there's transformation within us. Yet we know that heaven is here and now, and we know that these wonderful experiences are available to us here and now. These angels symbolized in white robes, the purity of thought and of consciousness, winged for flight, fleeting thoughts, meaning visions and dreams that may come to us in these moments, these messages, these God thoughts that come to us almost as if in flight, they've arrived within our spirit and life and consciousness. There's so many stories where someone's been warmed, worn in a dream, warned by an angel. You see, it's in consciousness this God thought that comes to us. The beautiful Easter story is speaking to us that there are God thoughts available to us, that the Spirit of God is ever speaking to our hearts and our lives. And when we welcome them in a higher consciousness, we welcome a greater understanding that unfolds for our lives. The text also goes on to say, these angels of the Lord appear, these messages, they came to the tomb. Going to the tomb, our God thoughts go and they face the tomb of death. And this is a great metaphor or symbolic of all the challenges we face in life. We're called not to run from them, but to run to them. We may have those tombs of fear. We may find these places within our spiritual life where we sense that there are moments that seem like it's finality. It's a tomb, it's a death, it's a separation. But here we find God thoughts rushing to that tomb. They are a higher consciousness. The light of the Lord came down. The greater understanding came to them in this wonderful moment. It comes to us. And they invite the God, when we invite the God thoughts to your tomb of despair, what we do is we face the problems head on. Right now, so many people are going through challenges with the COVID-19 crisis. This pandemic has put all kinds of fear within the hearts and lives of so many. This is our moment to welcome angelic messages, messages from God, to arrive within our hearts and our thoughts and our consciousness. As we open up our mind, it says, let God speak to us perfect peace, perfect serenity, the wonderful understanding that all things are going to work together for good, no matter what our scenario may be. The text goes on to share it in a metaphorical way that we see the stone rolled back and the stone removed for the greater purpose, not for the resur resurrected Christ to get out, but to prove the miraculous things of God surpassing any physical boundaries. You see, that's so true within our life, that these wonderful God thoughts of faith, hope, and trust, these God thoughts, these inspirations that come to us that seem as these wonderful messages, are the power to roll away any obstacle, roll away any stones within our life, and allow us to understand that we can surpass any kind of limitations within our world. So forget the physical boundaries. They don't mean anything in this world. The physical limitations don't mean anything in this world. Don't you get the message of Easter? It's simply saying when we may look at the tombs of our life and feel that this is the end, Easter saying, no, it's a new beginning, a new opportunity. So forget the Pharaoh holding you in bondage and forget giant Goliath, Goliath and all of his threats. Forget the Red Sea and its barriers and forget the lions of your den that the scriptures are talking about in all these stories where we may feel and sense some finality, some sort of fear, some sort of challenge. 
Forget the obstacles that block you to your promised land. After all, the resurrected Jesus appeared in rooms with closed doors. You see, even more so, the message, truth transcends. The question the woman had was when they came to the tomb, who would roll the stone away? Coming and wondering who and how is this all going to happen? How could they anoint the body with fragrant oils? Who would do this? Who would help them? Who's going to roll the stone away? And in our own individual lives, we may be asking the same question. A lot of challenges, a lot of problems. Who's gonna roll my stone away? Who's gonna help me in this time? Someone needs to do it for me, we may say. But nope, it's actually you. The very power of God within you. Those God thoughts, those messages of good news, that's what's going to remove the stone that's been blocking a resurrection experience of a new life, a new awareness, new faith, new hope, ushering forth and coming out. The angel mentioned here uh, in Matthew it says that the angel sat on the stone. I love that picture. Think about this God messages, this revelation, this awareness of truth, coming and sitting on the stone, sitting on that which we see as a barrier to our life, our great problem. And the angel sat on that barrier and now has a sort of a new thought, a new way of looking sitting on that barrier. You're not going to roll that stone away again. It's not going to roll back. It's not going to cover up the tomb again. You're not going to be enclosed in there. Instead, what we see is this beautiful truth, this wonderful revelation of God, insight, truth, understanding, sitting on that stone, which once was a barrier, saying, it's not rolling back. It's a done deal. You see how beautiful that is? When we claim these wonderful promises of truth, when we look to spiritual law at work within our lives, when we look to all these wonderful things that are unfolding for us in affirming power, we realize that that's what we need to hold on to in this time because that's what removes the stone and sits on the stone, saying that stone ain't rolling back. It's st uh, stagnant and staying there. Now, the angels, they were mentioned, one angel mentioned in Matthew in the book of John, it mentions two angels. Now there's discrepancies in these stories and they're not necessarily to discount anything, but each author trying to say something or teach something in telling the story for every Bible story is our story. So we're constantly looking at the metaphysical. We're looking at the, that which is beyond the physical, beyond the literal to understand the truth of it. So here we find then, in John, that there are two spiritual messengers that resurrect power in our lives. These two spiritual messengers really symbolize for us affirmation and denial. Two great things that we can use within our life. Two great God thoughts. Two great messages that come to our heart in our life and speak to us and help us in understanding a new consciousness. That when you're facing your worst, it's the power of affirming God's promises. It's the power of saying, no, this is not the way it is. This is the way it is. I deny and I affirm. I deny that this is the outcome. But I affirm that all things are working together for good. That the very laws of God are at work. And you're denying those thoughts of doubt and fear in this time of life. If we look more closely into life, we will find that resurrection is more than hope. It is our experience. It's how we're called to live in this world. So who rolled the stone away? Who made it move? Discussions of who did it roll it, who, who did it slide, and all these kind of things. And how did it, was it scooted? Oh, people can go in all kinds of different dial, theological talks and uh, directions and trying to figure out ask, answering these kind of questions. So I invite you to stop majoring in the minors and focus on the message. Keep the main thing the main thing. Let's not get caught up in biblical literalism, but caught up in the message and the metaphor that's found deep within this beautiful text. Every day, you and I have the power to roll, slide, scoot, move that stone away, for the power is in your believing. It's in your faith. That power is a moving energy. 
I am the resurrection of the life. I am this resurrection energy, Jesus said. I am life. I am this energy. And he spoke of this wonderful life force, that life is this energy within us. And we're called to live in an abundant life, abundant energy, abundant power for each and every life. There is a power for you. And we are all moving this energy with our thoughts and our beliefs, our actions. This is creating the movement of this powerful energy within. And our work is to keep it moving in the resurrection power, to keep it moving within our hearts and our lives. That stone rolling energy that rolls obstacles away from our journey, from our individual life. The obstacles you're facing to your highest and best. Put out that stone rolling energy, for we're called to live the rolling stone lifestyle. There were three men who were dying and were asked, what would you like people to say when they came to the casket to view your body? First one was a physician and he said, I'd like to hear them say that I was a great doctor. Second one was an instructor and he said, I'd like to hear I was a great teacher. And the third man said, I'd like to hear, look, he's moving. <laughs> Easter is all about that. It's saying, keep moving, keep rolling those stones, keep moving them away, keep removing all these obstacles, set yourself free. Come forth in new life and new understanding and new truth. Whatever those obstacles may have been, it's time to keep moving, rolling the stones away. We're living the Rolling Stone lifestyle. So today I'm asking you, will you roll the stone away that keeps you in the tomb of fear? Will you roll the stone away that keeps you in the place of doubt and questions? Will circumstances win or will you allow them to defeat you? Are you comfortable with the power of resurrection in your life? That power that's found within you, that life force energy that speaks against any finalities and obstacles and that nothing is in this world a constant outside of the beautiful, the beautiful spiritual truth of the divine. Today, the spirit is asking, are you ready to live the Rolling Stone lifestyle? Amen. I'm so glad that you've joined us today. We trust that you are experiencing a powerful Easter celebration in your homes. Please know that you are in my thoughts and prayers. I'm praying with you, I'm praying for you, and I'm believing for God's highest and best for each and every one. I know that together we're gonna to make it through this time. And we're gonna make it for a wonderful, happy reunion, a great celebration when we all come back together again. I'm looking forward to that time when I can see face to face each and every one of you and enjoy your spirit and presence and to be in that wonderful sense of communion with one another. It's going to happen and we're looking forward to that day. In the meantime, our work here is to roll the stones away, roll the obstacles away through the power and the presence of the divine within us. Welcome those angelic messages that are coming, those God thoughts that are coming to you each and every day through your individual devotions. Welcome them as they're coming to your individual tomb and allow them to roll the stone away. Allow them to set forth free the truth of life within you and welcome this experience. Let each and every day be an Easter celebration. Let each and every day be a day of resurrection power of allowing that power to work within you as you believe for the highest and best unfolding for you. I'm joining with you in that great faith. As we close today's service, it's our tradition to sing together this beautiful peace song. Yes, there is peace on earth, and yes, it begins with me. So I invite you to sing along from your home. You'll find the words on the screen. Join with me as we sing together this beautiful closing song and let the peace of God be yours. A beautiful peace of celebration of Easter in your heart. Yes, there is peace on earth and yes, it begins with me. Yes, there is peace on earth, the peace that was meant Oh, 
Loving in spirit, loving presence, all that is good, all that is holy. We rest in that awareness that that presence is with us, never leaving nor forsaking us. It's with us now in our individual homes, right where we are watching this live streaming. We know that that presence is powerful, for there is only one power, and it is at work within our lives. We are united, unified, resting in it, centered in it, and allowing it to work in us, through us, and always for us. And so this week we claim for our lives a resurrection power, a power that is able to roll stones and obstacles out of our life, out of our way, that we might move forward. The beauty and majesty of this glorious truth alive at work within our lives. We celebrate this now knowing that as we do, we claim these God thoughts, these inspirations, these affirmations, these great intentions that we express, that they are setting us free, liberating us in all ways. We're grateful for this, grateful for this powerful week ahead, grateful that we are Eastering each and every day, grateful that we are living our highest and best. With it, we release this now as together we say, and so it is. To take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally. Yes, there is peace on earth, and yes, it begins with me. Thank you for joining us at City of Light. Delight to have you with us. Catch us again next week, next Sunday morning at 11 o'clock at the same place. Delighted that you're with us. We know that God is doing something amazing in your heart and your life. Take a moment to check out our website, please. And as you do, it's at www.cityoflightatlanta.com. There you'll find more information about our classes, workshops, and an opportunity for you to donate. Thank you so much for your generous giving. We appreciate it so much. Most of all, please know we're praying with you and we're praying for you. God bless you. You have a great week. Once again, thanks for joining us here at City of Light.